Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and I recently uh, uh, saw an article kind of caught my eye on edutainment. And if you're not familiar with the phrase edutainment, it means education products that are also entertainment products. And often what it means is education products that cost money, that are ad supported, that have a sponsorship associated with them. Um, happens all the time because schools are strapped for money, right? And so instead of paying for something, a sponsor pays for it. We talked about that in another, um, in another video. But here's the thing. I was ready to be righteously indignant by what I read because what I read was in an article on one zero, uh, by a guy by the name of Jeff Wise, who says he's a, a science writer, a technology writer. And he was talking about this game called Prodigy. And you can find it at prodigygame.com. And the headline was the ethically questionable math game taking over U.S. schools. Now, with a title like that, it's like, wait a minute. We have to keep our kids safe. What's going on? Who's who's attacking them? Why is it ethically eth eth uh, ethically questionable? You know, how are they taking over the schools? Are they are they using mind control? What's, you know, what's going on? So what it turns out is that Prodigy is a game that's kind of like a cross between uh, World of Warcraft and Pokemon. And it's quests and it's battles and it's monsters and it's all the stuff that kids love in games. But to get to those things, you have to solve math problems. You can't get anything done in the game unless you solve math problems. So, you know, the article, uh, which is, again, on 1-0, um, spent a lot of time talking about ad-supported software and uh, screen time being way too much for our kids. And again, I'm all for making sure the kids don't have too much screen time, right? So then there was all these comments from people who were activists and, and so on. And this is what Jeff wrote. He wrote, and then there's the issue of Prodigy Games' business model, which relies on kids making in-app purchases of virtual goods with real money to augment their characters. Such freemium models have helped turbocharge the growth of popular video games like Fortnite, but critics and parents question its place in software and that is meant to be educational. Couldn't agree more. Really? You're going to you're going to like sneak it in there and you have kids buy like special magic capes and stuff like that with actual cash? That doesn't seem right. So I was going to go find out what it was all about and I went to prodigygames.com and I saw that they had an app for the iPhone. So I went to the App Store. And on the App Store there was no label that said in-app purchases. And I was like, well, if it has in-app purchases, Apple requires you to label it as such. You have to say it in the actual uh, page that your, your, your app is offered for download on. It was a free download. It wasn't, didn't cost any money. And so that was kind of weird. And um, so I downloaded it. I'm like, okay, I'll play the game for a while and I'll see how they sneak in there those uh, those offers to buy stuff with real money. And I downloaded the game. I created both a student account. Uh, I called myself David, oddly enough. And I created a parent account because you have to create a parent account along with the student account. And to be fair, there was a something for sale, but it wasn't to the kids. It was to the parents. And that was a monthly or yearly subscription that was anywhere between five bucks and nine bucks per month. And that did get kids extra stuff, but it could only be purchased by the parents, not by the kid. And so I played the game for a good hour and a half, two hours, because, you know, I'm doing research. Just because I'm playing games, I'm doing re research. And I was never presented at any point in time with anything but math problems. Math problems, that's it. And so I'm like, this is really weird. And I Googled Prodigy Game in-app purchases and I got nothing back. I got back the subscriptions, 
that you could purchase that gave the kids some extra stuff to play with in the game. So I couldn't find anything, and I ended up calling tech support at Prodigy Games and asking them questions. You know, what? how do you guys make money? What? What is it that, you know, that you do to make money? And they said, well, we make our money from the parents who purchase uh, subscriptions for their kids. And I said, well, what about the in-app purchases? And they said, we don't have any in-app purchases. Well, how else do you make money? She said, well, we had some toys, some actual real toys that we sold. They didn't sell all that well, but we still sell them. They're called Epics. And if you buy them, there's a little uh, code on the packaging that you can put in the game. But to be honest, it doesn't, they don't sell all that well. So we don't sell that many of them. And I said, can kids buy those? Are those promoted to kids in the game? And she goes, oh, no, 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 no. It has to be the parents that buy it. I said, so let me make sure I understand this. Even though it was said, and then there's the issue of Prodigy Games' business model, which relies on kids making in-app purchases of virtual goods for real money. You're telling me that at no point in time in playing the game can kids actually do that because in-app purchases don't exist. And she said, yeah, absolutely. So I posted a comment because this kind of struck a chord with me. Here's this article with an alarming headline and an alarming concept. And I wanted to come to the kid's defense, and I would have. I would have done a video, and I would have said, oh, this game is, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, masquerading as a math game, but it's actually, you know, trying to get kids to get used to doing what, what happens to parents with slot machine games, you know? You pay real money for, for coins in slot machine games. You know, I was ready to go to town. But instead, I highlighted that section that I read to you, and I left this comment. Uh, and that section was, of course, and then there's the issue of Prodigy's, Prodigy Games' business model, which is in-app purchases, etc. I'm afraid I can't find any information that corroborates this claim. Parents can buy a subscription that costs between $4.99 and $8.95 per month, and only parents can, not students, unless they somehow acquire and use their parents' login credentials. That, of course, is a very different problem. But the app is not labeled in the Apple App Store as having in-app purchases. And it would be required to be labeled as such if it did. And I only know this because I happen to have an app and I know the rules. I, you know, I, I put my stuff up in the App Store every time we update it. And they always ask me, do you have any in-app purchases? No. Can you please point me to examples of this? I ask you because you got me really concerned about this kind of model. So I downloaded and installed the app and created both a student and parent account. I then played the game as a student on the app and also on the website and managed that student account with the parent account, like the parents see how well the students are doing. As a student, I was never presented with an in-app purchase opportunity, and I was never encouraged to get my parents to subscribe. I also called ProdigyGame.com's tech support line and confirmed that students have no ability to purchase anything at all, and no such in-game virtual goods exist. They do offer parents the ability, in addition to purchasing subscriptions, to purchase physical toys called epics that have codes on the packaging that unlock, uh, unlock battle scenarios in the game, but again, children are never presented in the game with the opportunity to purchase them, either in the app or on the web, you can play it in both places. Only parents can do that with a separate login and on the website only. Can you please clarify the statement that I highlighted, which was the business model question? It's certainly fair to question ad-supported games, although this game is not ad-supported, as you state. It's optionally subscription-supported. And of course, excessive screen time issues, you know, you want to talk about that. But I would think you would want to be accurate about your claims about this particular game. And as I was thinking about this, I wondered how many times we've seen things online that got us all bent out of shape and turned out to be clickbait or link bait or just simply false. Or let's just be fair, let's let's be generous and say it was a misunderstanding. But this guy positions himself as a technology writer. Technology writers do know the difference between subscriptions, in-app purchases, and ads. 
They're all very different. And sometimes you buy a subscription to get rid of the ads, and sometimes you make an in-app purchase to uh, subscribe to something. You know, I get it. But this idea that the schools are being taken over by an ethically questionable uh, app game that teaches kids math? You know, I'm thinking to myself, for all the games that teach kids math and all the services that are out there, like, like uh, you know, tutoring services and stuff, that cost hundreds of dollars per month to have your kids involved. Gosh, five bucks a month sounds like a bargain to me. I don't know. I just, it just really struck me as odd and I wanted to share it with you. And I'm wondering <clears throat> if you've ever experienced something like that where you saw something on the web or you heard somebody say something or you caught kind of half of a, uh, a news story on the television or on radio and you're like, what? Why? This is horrifying. You know, I think we should question everything. And I'm wondering if there are things that you question. I even think you should question me when I tell you something. I want you to be an informed viewer. I want you to be as well equipped to handle things as possible. So, you know, I, I question everything. And I'm wondering if you're the same way. Or do you just sort of say, look, it's on the internet. It has to be true. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Would you, what do you think of this story? What do you think of all this? By the way, it's prodigygames.com if you want to go check it out if you have kids. Maybe your kids are already using it in the school that they're in. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to this channel to get these videos on a daily basis, all you have to do is click on my head over there. And if there's no head over there, then there is a subscribe button somewhere on this page. Hopefully you're watching it on vo2gogo.com. You want to see the latest episode? Click on that frame. YouTube will play it for you because they're awesome that way. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching these daily videos, and I will talk to you tomorrow.